Pete Hegseth. He is a first-time candidate, and he's here with me now to talk about his campaign. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. And you are not uh, are only here in the studio. You are just back from active duty, and you were most recently in Afghanistan. And that is likely to be an issue in the Senate campaign and the presidential campaign. President Obama has uh, announced uh, ago that by the end of this year, he wants to bring back nearly a third of the U.S. troops from Afghanistan. Do you think that's a good idea? Uh, I think it was responsible withdrawal. Is it, it, drawdown is a good idea. But what is not a good idea is surging troops, as we did, and then telling the enemy at the same time when you're going to leave. Uh, I experienced that day after day after day in Afghanistan, talking to Afghans, talking to soldiers, leaders there. When they're looking through us to a post-American future in Afghanistan, and it really minimizes our ability to affect the outcome there. So, yes, we're going to draw down. We're going to draw down responsibly and, and allow the Afghan government and security forces to stand up. But it's, it's, it's been a troubling strategy from the beginning to tell the enemy when we're going to leave. And is that something that kind of gnaws at soldiers on the ground when they hear politicians back in this country signaling our strategy? Sure, sure it does, because it has real ramifications for what they're doing uh, on the ground. In fact, we had interpreters in Afghanistan that would have people come up to them and just whisper the word 2014 in their ear, and the Taliban use it all the time. Well, we've got the, Americans have the watches, but we have the time. They're looking past us, and when we tell them that, it hurts our ability to actually execute the strategy. Now, President Obama uh, this week also uh, apologized for the, the inadvertent burning of uh, Korans in Afghanistan. Is, is that helpful uh, strategy? I mean, I, I, I realize people realize that should not have happened. Mm -hmm. Is it helpful to have him apologize? Well, I think I, I leave that to General Allen, our commander on the ground there, and he has said that it is helpful because it, it tampers the violence against our people. Happen messages to each other. folks who burned it were not the ones who took it away, so it was an accident. So the actual act itself doesn't merit an apology, but I understand why our commander on the ground would want to. He's looking out for the mission there and the troops on the ground. Now you are a member of the Minnesota National Guard. You've served in Cuba, in Iraq, and Afghanistan, but you're only 31 years old. You're just uh, barely one year over the minimum requirement to serve in the U.S. Senate. Why have you chosen not for office challenge? Uh, Senator Amy Klobuchar. Be because these are times of great consequence. Whether you're young or old, uh, it, it doesn't matter. We know what's at stake in our country. And right now, in our representation, uh, we've got a, a, a senior senator who I think in looking at the problems we face in this country, their answer is, is more regulation and more government uh, in Obamacare, in a, in a failed stimulus, in uh, looking at all the other issues that she's looked at, whether it's uh, bailouts for the banks and more and more debt. She ran in 2006 on a campaign of no more debt and no more debt. Deficits. And what have we had since? Six times she's voted to increase that debt, and, and debt has, has grown substantially. So the representation we have in these times should be less government, um, a better environment for businesses uh, to grow, and that's the kind of campaign we're going to run. Would you have voted for any of the, the bailouts, whether for the banks or the auto industry? No, I, because I think it sets a really bad precedent that if you step out and you fail, then there's going to be a backdrop for you. But do those do small and medium-sized businesses have that same option? Do they have an option to be bailed out? Uh, no. So we're we're picking winners and losers, which is what the government should not be in the business of doing. Now, Amy Klobuchar, of course, as I'm sure you know, will be a formidable appointment, uh, uh, opponent. She's got millions of dollars. Uh, she has a very high approval rating. What would be the message you would use to try to convince Minnesotans that you are the candidate they should well, vote the for? The first issue, first message we're going to use is a proactive one about why we would provide the best leadership for this state. That it is not politicians that create jobs. It's, it's, uh, it's small business owners, and we're going to create the environment for them to flourish. It's understanding the proper role of government, uh, that it's that uh, the, the federal government, what it can do is enumerated in the Constitution, and the rest should be left the state and local level. And right now, our representation looks at problems and says, increasing the size of the government and more regulation is how we're going to solve it. And we believe that Minnesotans, uh, when outside of those burdens, are going to open up more businesses, provide more jobs, and flourish. So we're going to provide a very clear contrast on her record, but it's not going to be just about her record. It's going to be proactively about what we're going to bring to the race. Just in our final minute here, the economy obviously will be the biggest issue, even though we talked quite a bit about foreign mm -hmm. policy a moment ago. Uh, jobs and health care reform are going to be big issues. Health care reform, is that something you will seek repeal? Of. We will seek a repeal of Obamacare and replace it with a more patient-centered al alternative uh, that gives patients an opportunity to, to look for the kind of care they want. Would you favor tax cuts to stimulate the economy? Uh, I think at this point it is a spend. Yes, I would. Where where we can and simplification of the tax code, really understanding that those folks at the top bracket right now they've got the lawyers that they can navigate that code to give a, a better uh, tax situation for the more, for the wealthy. So simplifying that code levels the playing field. The rich pay their fair share. Everyone else in the middle class pays their. 
fair share. So we're going to look at the tax code very heavily. But it's a revenue, it's a spending problem. We need to get our spending under control in Washington. Politicians, including Senator Klobuchar, have been spending our, us off a cliff. And until we rein back with courage uh, that, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. And finally, uh, at the state convention, uh, there will be an endorsement battle in all likelihood. Will you abide by the endorsement? Yes, we will. We will abide by the endorsement, and, and we intend to win it. All right, Pete Hegseth, he is running for the U.S. Senate, a brand-new candidate in just this week.